So if you need to adjust your handbrake, the first thing you need to do is take off the uh, centre armrest here. And to do that, there's a screw at the back, which is easy to get to. And there's a screw at the front here, which is kind of wedged between the, um, the armrest and the seat. And what I tend to do is use a, um, uh, a little bit like that. And you can kind of get it into the screw and um, you could even put a, a little tiny spanner on the end of that and just get it turning or you could use a uh, an angled screwdriver like that just get it in there get it turning take those two screws out um, i tend to find if you put the um, gear up like that and pull the handbrake on it makes it easier to uh to ease it off you just have to kind of wiggle it and it eventually comes off and uh, when you've done that you need to loosen these two screws here so there's a locking nut there and uh, and the actual adjuster bolt there both 10 mil and uh, when you've done that make sure it's nice and floppy and your movement there make sure the uh, cables move in and out reasonably well from this end and then once you've done that that's all we need to do for the minute right so once you have taken the um, handbrake out or taken the uh, sense console out and uh, wound off the adjusters there the next thing you're going to have to do is on the back of the um, handbrake cable here if you pull the uh, little rubber bellow back this kind of pulls off and then in here there's like a locking pin that goes in there like that if you just tap this with a screwdriver and a hammer this comes out and uh, on this side here there's like a little clevis pin which goes in there and into the actual uh, handbrake adjuster it's also the actual handbrake mechanism itself here so if you take that out and then this kind of pulls back he says <coughs> And there you go, there's the, uh, the end of your handbrake cable there. So the first thing you need to do is just make sure that this bellow is in good condition. Um, it's not uh, torn or letting in any moisture into the actual cable. That's fairly critical. As soon as this bellow breaks or it perishes, it's pretty much game over unless you actually get on top of it and uh, actually replace it. The next thing you need to do is make sure this cable moves freely so i'm moving it in and out now obviously you can do this with two hands um, <clears throat> you need to make sure that it easily moves on the actual handbrake so i'm moving it in and out i don't know if you can hear that but i can actually hear the handbrake itself or the mechanism on the handbrake moving this is moving lovely and freely there's, there's no tension there at all so this cable is working perfectly if you can't move this easily with your hand then you've got knackered cables and you need to replace this okay so both sides make sure that this can move in and out freely very important okay if you have taken the caliper off for whatever reason let's say you've replaced the discs or you've replaced the pads um, what you're going to have to do is wind back the piston in here I don't know if I can show you. Yeah. The piston in here. Oops. I can't really show you. But you need to wind back the piston with a piston wind back tool. It winds back in. Um, what is that? Clockwise? Yeah, clockwise. Winds back in clockwise. Wind it in all the way back. And then wind it just back out again. Just enough. Just to line up with the little notch. Uh, at the back of the pad. On the back of these pads there's like a little nipple bit that, stips, that sticks out and that goes into a slot um, in the piston. It's very important that the, the, the pad and the piston line up correctly. And then when you've, when you've done that just get back in the car, operate the, uh, the foot brake and just keep pumping the foot brake until the pads come into contact with the disc. Okay, you don't have to go mad, you don't have to pump it really hard or you don't have to have the engine running or anything like that. Just make sure you pump the brake 
on the foot brake um, just to uh, just to bring these pads in line with the disc so there's no there's no moving there's a little bit of movement there which you'd expect but just get get, get them taut you know nice and tight and then that's all set up <clears throat> and then the next thing you've got to do is on the back here you can see the handbrake mechanism or handbrake lever here it's very important that this returns if you move it with your hand you can see me moving it there that is operating the handbrake okay so you can see how much movement there is there maybe 10 mil 15 mil if you push that in with your hand you should be able to lock the disc so with your other hand if you if you turn this with one hand okay if you're turning that and then you press this with your other hand you should be able to lock this disc so you can't turn it with just your hand okay so as long as you can do that as long as you can press this in and lock the disc with just with your hands you know then you know for certain that the handbrake mechanism is working properly okay that's working properly so that's locking the disc that's working perfectly so now you know that your cables are okay as long as they move in and out freely they're working okay as long as you can lock the disc with your fingers there that's working perfectly right the next important thing is you put the you put your cable back in fix that back in now I won't do it now but sorry about that I'll just drop the phone put your pin back in put the pin back in here as I can do this with just one hand yeah I probably can't <laughs> oh there you go see right so what you need to do now is go back to the handbrake and you need to turn the adjuster mechanism so that it just takes up the slack in this cable so when you start turning that adjuster this cable here is just taking up the slack there's a little bit of slack here when you fitted that and I'll do that in a minute right so I've just put my new shiny new uh, stainless steel clevis pins in there um, if you're wondering what they are I got these off eBay quite cheaply I can't remember how much they were I think they were like seven quid something like that stainless steel clevis pin kit m8 by 20 mil that goes in there nice and uh, looks nice uh, put plenty of grease in there um, I tend to use um, corrosion block from ACF 50 waterproof grease it's good stuff um, don't use copper grease or anything just use a proper grease a multi-purpose grease will be fine I would have thought I mean to be honest this is something you want to do yearly anyway to keep your handbrake in, in uh, good condition um, remember to uh, clip the uh, dust boot or the rubber boot on there um, make sure when you're putting these little clips back in that they do line up in the slot properly um, this one actually needs redoing it's actually not not lined up properly and just make sure it holds it nice and firm and then when you've done that your next job is to uh, adjust the handbrake mechanism okay so we're back in the car now um, give the foot brake a couple of good firm presses just to make sure that the uh, the pads are nicely seated against the disc so a couple of firm presses on the handbrake obviously this is this is obviously really floppy at the moment because uh, it isn't adjusted but you can still see that the cables are going in and out nice and freely they're not binding up nothing wrong there right so the next thing you need to do is adjust this lower nut here and you need to adjust it all the way down keep turning it turning 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 and basically the first thing we want to make sure we're doing is taking up the slack in this uh, lower cable here so we're just taking up the slack at the moment oh, it's a very hot day today it's uh, 27 degrees and uh, yeah it's very warm which makes a change 
typical British weather. Too cold for too long and then it's suddenly too hot. Right, let's see how we're doing here. Okay, so still a little bit of slack in that. I'm just going to wind this down a little bit further. Right, I just had to pause for a minute because uh, someone turned up. Right, um, so I've adjusted this all the way down. I've taken up all the slack in that lower cable and you can see there, there's a tiny, tiny bit of slack. A little, little bit of slack just before the uh, mechanism starts moving. And that's what you want, a little, little bit of slack. Right, in order to, well, to confirm this is properly adjusted, you should have between eight and nine clicks on this mechanism before you can pretty much pull no further. So let's just count the clicks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or just about got ten out of that. And that's how you know it's properly adjusted. So let's just try that one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, well that was nine, ten. I could maybe do of there is a little bit of slack there. I'm just going to wind that down a little bit further. Just take out that little bit of slack. All right, let's just try that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that's about as far as it will go. Whew, getting really hot. So uh, that's how you know you've got a properly adjusted handbrake between Eight and nine clicks is a perfectly functioning handbrake. Right, so we're back at the caliper now. And the single most important thing when you've adjusted your handbrake and you get your nice nine clicks, it's imperative that this goes back to the end stop. Okay, this shouldn't be sitting there, you know, partially pulled in like that. You shouldn't need to do that at all. This should be all the way back just like it was before you took this clevis pin out. So you might want to even make a mark where this lever ends, because there's a little end stop under here, you know, where it stops travel, so it goes all the way back. It's critical that when you've adjusted your handbrake, it's not pulling on that cable. Okay, really important. There should be no pulling on that at all. This should be allowed to go all the way back it may not go, you know, completely all the way back, but pretty much near all the way back to that end stop. And you should even feel a little bit of, see I can move this clevis pin quite easily, it's, it's loose. There's no pulling on this cable. Right, I have to keep pressing pause because people keep uh, walking past and talking to me. Right, as I was saying, very important that this mechanism goes all the way back. I can't stress that enough. Now if I pull this in, it doesn't go quite back by itself. There's a little bit of friction there, but if I pull it, you see, that's that made it go all the way back. So push it, just give it a little tug. There you go, that's all it needed, about a millimetre of movement, just to get it back to the end stop. And obviously make, make certain that you can still turn the disc by hand. Very important that it's not dragging on the disc at all. You want to have a little bit of free play in there. And, um, that is pretty much it, to be honest. As long as you followed everything I've done here, I don't know how you could get it wrong, to be honest. Um, yeah, a lot of people seem to struggle with this job, and I'm not entirely sure why, really. It's a very, very simple mechanism. There's like a little spiral um, threaded rod in here, which as the disc wears down, it kind of slowly turns out and keeps up the, uh, the tension on the disc or on the piston I should say, keeps it you know, in contact with the back of the, uh, the pad. Very easy. If you need to replace these, di these cables, um, a lot of people say, uh, yeah, as I was saying, um, a lot of people say that um, you don't have to drop the fuel tank to replace these cables. No, you don't, you don't have to drop the fuel tank, but trust me, it's a lot easier if you do. Um, because these cables they kind of feed round up over the fuel tank and round the side and it is really difficult to get in there if the fuel tanks in the way um, you can drop it down a certain way but you're limited to how far you can drop it down 
by the cables in the top, you know, where the fuel comes out. My advice to you is um, take the bins out from behind the driver's seat, you know, the plastic bins, <coughs> storage bins. Um, you'll see the top of the fuel tank, there's like a little metal plate on top of that, which you have to prise off with a screwdriver. Do that, take off the cables, take off the fuel lines, take off the senders, you know, the fuel tank sender, that kind of thing. It's only a couple of plugs, it's really easy, it takes about 20 minutes and it just makes your life a whole lot easier. You can do the whole job on axle, on, um, well, axle stands or on ramps. Um, if you feel more confident under ramps, that's fine. It just means you need, just need to get your fingers up here to uh, to take off the, uh, the clevis pin and the, um, and the clip here. That's all you need to do. Um, it's probably easier if you take the wheels off, to be honest with you. Why make, why make life uh, hard for yourself? Get up in the air, get up on our axle stands, and uh, yeah, drop the tank. And it's actually really very, very straightforward. It's, it's not a difficult job at all. It's just uh, methodical. Um, a lot of people tend to get a bit hung up about these cables here not being perfectly aligned. You can see mine aren't perfectly aligned. There's probably about another five mil of extra length on this cable. It really doesn't matter. As long as those um, levers are going back to the end stop every time you pull this in as long as the cables are moving freely and not binding up you know not getting stuck as long as they're moving at the same speed or roughly the same speed it's perfect it doesn't matter it's just differences in manufacturing process i guess these are aftermarket cables from euro car parts nothing wrong with them at all they're perfect uh, you don't need to buy uh, genuine toyota ones as some people say you have to the euro car part ones fit fine <clears throat> These are different lengths and there's different type there's two different types pre-facelift and facelift cables make sure you get the right ones um, as you take these cables out measure the new cable against it make sure you get the lengths around the right way because one is longer than the other um, yeah and that's pretty much it that's all I can tell you really um, as I say nine clicks let's just count again one two three three four five six seven Eight, nine. I can't even get ten. So that's perfect. Um, once you've adjusted it and you're happy, once you're, you're happy, there's a little tiny little bit of slack in here. Then you can wind down the uh, locking pin, the uh, locking nut, and uh, put it all back together again. And that is that. So just another quick follow-up video. Here's that pesky little uh, screw I was telling you about under here. It's just here in a horrible place right between the seat and the um, the centre console as I say you can either use a uh, an angled screwdriver like this and get it in there to turn it or you could use a bit like that and a pair of pliers or put a spanner on the end of that to turn it because that these do actually get wedged quite nicely between the end of that screw and uh, the seat so it kind of puts a little bit of tension on it for you while you turn it so that's that the other thing i meant forgot to mention is that underneath the handbrake there's a little bit of plastic here which kind of clips in there clips on there that has to be taken out as well um that's that and the gear knob literally just screws on just put that back on now oops go right and let's just do one final test so there's our handbrake in the resting position a little bit of movement there a little bit of play that's what you want I'm moving that I can tell that isn't pulling on the cables as soon as I get to about that position I can feel the tension and I can feel the cables moving nice and freely so let's just check our clicks one two three four five six seven eight nine <laughs> see if i can get ten. Oh, ten, just about but the important thing is just for normal braking everyday braking you know obviously everyday parking i should say if it goes to there and you can see there's like a little cut out here that is where it should stop if your handbrake stops there or maybe right up here that's wrong it should definitely stop 
just there, just where it starts to taper in here. That should be enough. Yeah. You can see mine's, I could have maybe adjusted that down a little bit more, you know. There's a little bit too much free play there, a little bit too much. So I could have probably taken about another few turns out of that adjuster, but oh, I've put it all back together now, so I don't care. Anyway, if you've done all that, hopefully you'll have a lovely working handbrake. And uh, I wish you good luck with that. See you on the next video.